Hey, welcome back into today's video. Kendrick Lamar and Drake have been going back and forth on the internet with rap songs exposing each other. They're dragging other rappers in and they don't want anything to do with it. While at the same time Drake alleges that Kendrick hurts women, Kendrick is saying that Drake is a P3 Dio. And this is when people started digging up suspicious situations in Drake's past with young girls, not to mention rumors that he lives with and supports registered offenders in the same house with his children. Amidst this, Kendrick drops Drake's dog, showing exactly where he lives. And now somebody's in the hospital, and the police should probably investigate before somebody else gets hurt. In today's video. So there's a big rap beef going on right now between Drake and Kendrick Lamar. Nobody knows really what's all going on. There's a lot of information that's coming out there, but I am going to explain it to you. So as you can see, top stories are trending between Kendrick Lamar and Drake and uh, Drake and Millie Bobby Brown's controversial friendship explained. We'll get into that a little bit later in the video. Drake is a Canadian rapper and singer, and Kendrick Lamar is an American rapper and songwriter. In one of Kendrick Lamar's diss tracks you might notice this as the uh the cover photo now if you don't know what this is one user on twitter saying the artwork of not like us is supposed to look like drake's home in toronto and the red pants looking like the offender registry map i think he won this off skill i agree i think he won he was much better i think Drake he won it off of strategy did kendrick lamar win let's see rap beefs expert here this situation also has a little bit to do with J. Cole, which he kind of bounced out, and we're going to talk about that. But apparently these three were called the trio or something like that. The, the trio uh, of, like, amazing rap rappers. The media dubbed them the big three. So it was J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar, and Drake. They were the big three. But to completely understand this situation, we need to go back to 2013, where on a track with Big Sean, Kendrick Lamar kind of challenged... Drake and J. Cole and a few others in the industry. I'm usually homeboys with the same I'm rhyming with, but this is hip hop and them should know what time it is. And that goes for Jeremiah Cole, which is J. Cole, Big Crit, Well, Pusha T, Meek Mills, ASAP Rocky, Drake, Big Sean, J. Electron, Tyler, and Mac Miller, which is interesting. He calls Big Sean out on his own track. He says, I got love for you all, but I'm trying to, uh, oof, he's really. Trying to make sure your core fans never heard of you. I don't want to hear not one more noun or verb from you. What is competition? I'm trying to raise the bar high. I remember when Kendrick Lamar came out on the scene. It was just really big. It was constant. Everybody was listening to Drake, J. Cole, and Kendrick Lamar. So this is interesting. So this they were dubbed the big three. And then J. Cole out of nowhere comes in uh, this recently in October in a song called First Person Shooter where he had some words to say about Kendrick, but it's it's kind of weird that he even involved himself because he's not really the type that has been one to jump in the middle of beefs like this. Maybe because he was considered part of the big three, he felt entitled to say what was on his mind. This is what he said. Love when they argue the hardest MC. Is it K-Dot, is it Aubrey or me? We the big three like we started the league, but right now I feel like Muhammad Ali seems a little bit like friendly fire they're all kind of competitors but they all want to be friends but jayco seems to play it really safe like i would go as far as to say is he fence sits because he does his rhymes in a way that seemed to be just really careful we're in the 2013 song where kendrick lamar dropped some names he there was nothing left to the imagination versus uh j cole where he does a cutesy muhammad ali analogy it's interesting because it does seem like a, a diss of its own now that I'm looking at it, like this line about the Super Bowl where Kendrick Lamar played at the Super Bowl, which Kendrick obviously didn't appreciate that because he referred to those as sneak disses and subliminal shots. Not only that, but he ended up dropping a verse on Metro Boomin and Future's song. Uh, it was on March 22nd, I believe. And it was called Like That. In that song, he declared that the era of the big three was no more, stating, he said, sneak diss and first person shooter. That's pretty obvious. Think I won't drop the location, I still got PTSD. Mother the big three, it's just big me. Mother the big three, it's just big me. This is kind of where Jayco's responses come in and they are not as hard hitting. I don't think he's interested in fighting. He responded with a song called Seven Minute Drill to which he released in a mixtape that he dropped on April 5th. He said, I came up in the veal, so I'm good when it's tension. He's still doing shows, but he fell off like The Simpsons. He says, your first is classic, your last is 
tragic. Your second put people to sleep, but they gassed it. Now, he's talking about Kendrick's album To Pimp a Butterfly, which was met with widespread critical acclaim. People literally called it one of the best hip hop albums of all time. So that doesn't make any sense at all. And it was received poorly from fans. Your last shit was tragic. So J. Cole did delete that song, which, you know, I saw that coming because the mixtape was my delete later. Jayco also addressed deleting this, saying, So I'm so proud of that project, except for one part. It's one part of that that make me feel like, man, that's the lamest I ever did in my life, right? And I know this is not what a lot of people want to hear. I know I can hear my niggas up there right now like, nah, nah I don't do that. But I got to keep it 100 with y'all, right? I damn near had a relapse, right? Because... Y'all heard something that happened two, two, three weeks ago, however long it was. Y'all heard that bazooka that was dropped on the motherfucking game, right? So all of this time of me moving on my own accord, for the first time I was tested. Why am I tested? Because I got the world and I got my niggas like, what you going to do, Cole? <laughs> my niggas like, bit boy, I must have had a thousand missed calls. Oh my God. Text flooded. I couldn't even answer my nigga. It's wartime, right? <laughs> Niggas want to see blood, and and I was conflicted because one, I know my heart. You know what I mean? And like, I know how I feel about my peers. These two niggas that I just been blessed to even stand beside in this game, let alone chase chase their greatness, right? So I felt conflicted because I'm like, bro, I know I don't really feel no way but the world want to see blood. I don't know if y'all can feel that, but the world want to see blood. So I say all of that to say, in my spirit of trying to like, get this music out, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I moved in a way that was, that I feel spiritually feel bad on me. Like, like I try to like, jab my nigga back, and I try to keep it friendly, but at the end of the day, when I listen to it, and when it comes out, and I see the talk, don't sit right with my spirit. That make me feel. That disrupts my peace. So what I want to say right here tonight is in the midst of me doing that and, and, and trying to find a little angle and downplay this, this nigga's uh, catalog and his greatness, I want to say right now tonight, how many people think Kendrick Lamar is one of the greatest motherfuckers to ever touch a microphone? Very true. Okay. Dreamville, y'all love Kendrick Lamar, correct? As do I. So I just want to come up here and be like, publicly be like, bro, that was the lamest, like, goofy. And it make, I say all that to say, it made me feel like 10 years ago when I was moving incorrectly. And I pray that God align me back up on my purpose and on my path. You know what I mean? I pray that my nigga really didn't feel no way. And if he did, my nigga, I got my chin out. Take your best shot. I'm going to take that on the chin, boy. Do what you do. You know what I mean? Like, all good. Like, it's, it's love. And I pray that, you know, I pray that y'all are like, forgive a nigga for like the misstep and then, and then I can get back to my true path. Because I ain't going to lie to y'all, past two days felt terrible. Like, it let me know how good I've been sleeping for the past 10 years. Honestly, we go through trials and tribulations, tests. It's like the price you pay for the good times. Like, everything is going great. Everything is good. You only know it's good and you only know it's great because you went through the other stuff. You, you you wouldn't know good without the bad. If you just only had good, then you wouldn't know it's good. If you only had bad, you wouldn't know it's bad. You have to have a contrast. There has to be a counter distinction between two things, and you just you got to juxtapose them right next to each other, and you can see the duality of the existence. <laughs> I just went so uh, sorry. Sometimes when I do research, I I go I get real spiritual and deep. It makes sense now that he explained himself. I can see why he was kind of floating back and forth. He was fence sitting because he did feel multiple tops away at the same time. So, and things are seriously getting dark. There was some shots fired outside Drake's home. I believe uh, his bodyguard was hit. And so I can completely understand if you look at the angle, J. Cole seeing how dark and deep this was getting. He probably didn't want that on his legacy at all. And I, I mean, I wouldn't need to. The real winner is low-key J. Cole. When you're looking at like everybody and how they're going to walk out of this, J. Cole does not have a scratch on him. He doesn't have a tint in the armor. He's walking off into the sunset right now because the reality of the fact is... 
people are changing their sentiment. They're now excited for the fall off. They want to know what Cole's perspective is going to be on all this. And they respect him for not entering into the shade room chamber and not really entertaining something that's turned into a disaster class, for lack of a better word. Okay, J J Cole probably did win. Yeah, I think Kendrick and Drake probably should stop. It's cool to have diss songs back and forth, like when Eminem and uh, Machine Gun Kelly were going back and forth. That was cool. We get some good songs out of it. But when the culture gets this destructive, it, it only hurts it. I got too many tabs pulled up. I think. Gosh, my computer froze. Wow. I swear to God, I'm going to switch the Mac. One user saying, I hope history remembers J. Cole as a smart man for walking away from this. Another saying, J. Cole probably somewhere in nature listening to the birds chirp swinging his feet. Ha <laughs> ha! It's true. Another saying, J. Cole's decision to stay out of this beef will go down as one of the greatest moments of foresight in modern history. I completely understand this. As I was making this video, you saw me being like, J. Cole, like what? And then like, as it progressed, I'm like, oh, I see. That's why you got to wait for all the facts to come out and let people make their mind and understand with hindsight what is actually going on. People's got to process things, you know. So leading up to Drake dropping his first response, he was trolling Metro Boomin and Kendrick with things like this. Metro! Shut your voice up. Make some talk to him. Drake also actually hired a real band to go outside of the place that Future and Metro were promoting their collaborative album. Here's them promoting We Don't Trust You, and then here's Drake. In general, he's been just trolling people back and forth. Finally, he drops the song titled Push Ups on April 13th. So in the song, he talks about rumors where he stole Metro's girlfriend, and then he makes fun of Kendrick Lamar's height. I think it's childish. He says, how are you big stepping with size seven men's on? And then before Kendrick could even respond, Drake dropped another diss track on April 19th, I believe it was, called Taylor Made Freestyle, where he says uh, that he, he thinks the delayed response from Kendrick's because he didn't want to compete with a Taylor Swift album that just came out. And it had AI generated voices of Tupac and uh, Snoop Dogg. Why did he do that? Snoop Dogg even responded to this saying, They did what? When? How? Are you sure? I'm going back to bed. Good night. One well, user saying they forced you into it. It was finally on April 30th, Kendrick Lamar responded. And he dropped a song titled Euphoria, which is named after the show that Drake co-produces. He says, you're not a rap artist, you're a scam artist with the hopes of being accepted. Tommy Hilfiger stood out, but FUBU never been in your collection. He goes on in the song saying that he's uncomfortable with Drake using the N-word because he's mixed race. How many more fairy tale stories about your life till we've had enough? How many more black features till you finally feel you're black enough? He also goes on to talk about his last rap battle with Pusha T, where Pusha T put out there that he had a secret son named Adonis. I got a son to raise, but I can see you don't know nothing about that. Waking them up, know nothing about that, and tell them to pray, know nothing about that, and giving them tools to walk through life like day to day, know nothing about that. Teaching them morals, integrity, discipline, listen man, you don't know nothing about that. Speaking the truth and consider what God's considering, you don't know nothing about that. Oh, we got them. Gotta take care of your kids. That's what you gotta do. It's so important to be a father. You can't just be out here just having relations with every single woman unprotected and then have a child and then just this there's no way if you're having relations with these women and you're not planning on having a child with them you probably shouldn't be having unprotected relations with them whoever you're dating right now whoever you're seeing if you're or even if it's your girlfriend you're in a relationship right now i want you to ask yourself is this the person that you can see raising your children is this the woman that you can see spending the rest of your life with if you're out here stuck in a limbo and you don't really know and have no direction or path, that's a good place to start. And that takes a man to admit. 
That's one of the most fundamental strengths that you can have within yourself. A lot of these relationships has got two people in them that are just kind of in the relationship with no advance of the future at all. You're just wasting her time and you're wasting your time because nothing's going to happen. And the other person that you're in a relationship, they might not care. They might be completely happy with everything that's going on because they don't have the same vision that you have. Sometimes if you're in a relationship with somebody and they're cool with it, if you don't see a future with that person, it's your obligation as a man to step up and do the right thing. I'm not trying to be your daddy. <laughs> Meanwhile, Drake's been trolling responses on his Instagram, uh, for example. In Kendrick's song Euphoria, he says this. I hate the way that you walk, the way that you talk. I hate the way that you dress. I hate the way that you sneak this. If I catch flight, it's gonna be direct. We hate the because they confuse themselves with real women. Drake posted on Instagram uh, a movie clip from 10 Things I Hate About You where the girl is going over the things that she hates and loves about uh, her crush. I hate you so much it makes me sick. It even makes me rhyme. I hate it. I hate the way you're always right. I hate it when you lie. I hate it when you make me laugh. Even worse when you make me cry. Not too long after that, Kendrick dropped another track. I believe it was on uh, May 3rd. It was 616 in LA. That's the title of the song. It. I don't, I'm not aware. I do not know at this time if it in fact was 616 in LA. But that same day, Drake dropped another diss song called Family Matters, where he alleged infidelity and domestic abuse in his current relationship with fiance Whitney Alford. You the black messiah wifing up a mixed queen and hit vanilla cream to help out with your self-esteem. Drake also claimed that Kendrick's child was fathered by the his manager, which is strange. But within an hour, Kendrick responded on May 3rd, 2024 with Meet the Grams. In this song, it escalated. He starts attacking Drake's family and writes uh, letters to his mother as well as to his son. Dear Adonis, I'm sorry that man is your father. Let me be honest. It takes a man to be a man. Your dad is not responsive. Oof. To his mother, Dear Sandra, your son's got some habits. I hope you don't undermine them. Especially with all the girls that's hurt inside this climate. You a woman so you know how it feels to be in alignment. He also writes a letter to a third mysterious person who is supposed to be Drake's secret daughter. So there's another secret child. Saying, Dear baby girl, I'm sorry your father is not active inside your world. He don't commit to much but his music. But yeah, that's for sure. He's a narcissist misogynist living inside his songs. Tried destroying families rather than taking care of his own. Kendrick also makes a reference to Drake's uh, creepy past with younger women, which we're, we're going to talk about. Sanders, sit down. What I'm about to say is heavy. Now listen. Mm. Your son's a sick man with sick thoughts. I think guys like him should die. Him and Weinstein should get effed up in sales for the rest of their life. It also says he's got offenders on Hovo that he keep a monthly allowance. A child should never be compromised and he keeping his child around them. It references back to his song Not Like Us where on the album cover it has the offenders registry with several several indicators on Drake's home. Now I want to take a second to talk about a couple of the creepy situations to do with Drake and younger women. There was a disturbing video that surfaced of Drake kissing a 17 year old at a concert. <laughs>
Jesus. So that was in 2010, so Drake would have been about 23 years old, uh, kissing a 17-year-old. That's not good. Uh, there's, that's the, I, I, nope. <laughs> now this girl actually did come out recently and say that this was no big deal. I kind of, I kind of beg to differ. Going on to say this was purely for his stage act. I was 17 years old and I'm 31 now. It was nothing then and it's nothing now. Regarding the video that's going around, I was 17 back then and I'm 31 now. This was a concert that my dad took me to back in high school. Drake's entourage actually picked me out from the crowd of people, not Drake himself. BTW, performers always bring up fans on stage. It's part of their show. It's nothing then and it's still nothing now. Now that I've cleared these false narratives, I'm going back to study for my law school exams. Wish me luck. Good luck to you. I hope it works out. But honestly, saying that his entourage picked you out of the crowd is not very good right now as Kendrick has aimed at his entourage saying that, you know. One user saying, this is still weird. Y'all noticed that she started working at Republic Records in 2016 and seems to be part of the music business. Something seems off. Another user saying, Jesus Christ. I, th I think I've said that several times while I've been making this video. There's also a situation back in 2018 where rumors circulated about an 18-year-old model that was dating Drake. One article says on August 25th, Bella posted sweet, coupley Instagram photos with Drake alongside the caption, No place I'd rather be. If that's not couple confirmation, what is? And if you go to click this now, it has now been removed. But even creepier... Apparently, Drake first met Bella Harris when she was 16. One article saying apparently the two first met in the Summer 16 tour in 2016, hosted by Drake and Future. Funny enough, Harris would have been 16 at the time as well. Obviously, we don't know if that's when they started dating, but yeah, it raises at least a few red flags of grossness. Honestly, yeah, it's pretty gross. Another very troubling situation comes from the actress uh, Millie Bobby Brown of Stranger Things, where it was discovered that 31-year-old Drake was texting 14-year-old uh, Brown. One user saying, when we found out Drake31 is texting Millie Bobby Brown, 14, talking about how much I miss you so. It's actually come from an interview with Millie Bobby Brown where she said this. I love him. I met him in Australia and um, he's honestly so fantastic and a great friend and a great, uh, great role model. You know, we text, we just text each other the other day and he was like, I miss you so much. I was like, I miss you more. He's coming to Atlanta, so I'm definitely going to go and see him. I'm so excited. Yeah. You and Drake? That's awesome. That's awesome. What advice does he give you? Like, what does he say? Uh, about boys. He helps me. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's great. I found a clip where Millie goes into a little bit more detail. Drake? She wants to see me? And I was like, okay, we're going. So I, like, got my outfit prepared. I went there. And, and he was such a fanboy. And I was such a fangirl that we... And honestly, we text all the time now. He helps me with everything, like, just life lessons... Um, he's amazing. He's a great human being. And we went to dinner afterwards and we had dinner the next day and then we met. In That's really interesting. And I want to know your thoughts about this. Also, I want to talk a little bit about what Kanye West said about him and Lucian Grange. For those of you that don't know, Lucian Grange was recently added to the Diddy lawsuit saying that he aided and abetted. They aided and embedded Mr. Combs' perpetrating of coercive, not great things, saying that they were co-conspirators who knowingly benefited. He, of course, denied this. But I want you guys to hear what Kanye West said. The word on the street is that Lucian was setting up Drake to take Diddy's spot as the go-to rapper for certain Hollywood elites. Something obviously wrong with this one individual that no one wants to speak about, and I feel like you're the only person that's gonna really put it out there. Now you say rich baby daddy, it's like, Drake has a rich baby daddy named Lucian and Universal. Wow. <laughs> He's like, you know, like, man, my daddy got it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, wow. my daddy controlled the spins. My daddy got the DSPs. My daddy, Drake wow. has a rich baby daddy named so, Lucian. So all of his streams and the number ones <laughs> is controlled by someone named Lucian. Universal Music CEO and one of the most powerful men in entertainment, Lucian Grange. None of this could be verified. I don't want to get too conspiracy in this video, but it takes me back to Kendrick's line where he said, Cat Williams said, get the truth. So I'm going to get mines. The embassy about to get raided too. It's only a matter of time. The embassy being, of course, Drake's mansion. I don't know if you guys know who Shane Gillis is, the comedian. He's a really funny guy. Not, I don't know if you know this. Every country song is just about exactly what a white guy is doing at that moment. <laughs> It's like, I turn the radio up. It's like, yeah, yeah. That's good. That's music. That's what I like. He was on a podcast in 2019. They were talking about R. Kelly and Epstein. And 
he said this about Drake. So I do want to say this. I want to be on the record. Drake, sure. Drake's going to be, he's on that R. Kelly tip. You think so? Drizzy Drake likes him young. What? He does. That's somewhat known already, but it, this is one of those things where I want to, you know, you got to say something. Like, remember Louis, that whole thing? Yeah. And like, we knew about that. Yeah. And we were just like, I don't know. Drake, Jersey Drake's into the young ones. He's going to get got in the next five years. Yeah, I have a good theory on Jersey Drake. He's getting brought, brought down, bro. You think so? No doubt. It is extremely not good. <laughs> That's not good. The Hollywood industry is destructive. I, I covered a lot of the... Uh, stuff that went on with Jojo Siwa in my last most recent video. The industry is exploitative and it hurts these young girls. Jesus Christ. In Kendrick's song, Not Like Us, where the, you know, the po it's posted as the, uh, the cover of uh, Drake's home, which we're going to talk about that too. And all of these are the offenders that live at his house. He says, say Drake, I hear you like I'm young. You better not ever go to cell block one. To any bitch that talks to him and they in love, just make sure you hide your little sister from him. Also saying, why are you trolling like a Ain't you tired trying to strike a chord and it's probably a minor. Oh man. Jesus. In Drake's most recent diss, The Heart Part 6, which was released just two days ago, he basically denies everything that Kendrick says, and he even says that he uh, planted a mole to give Kendrick fake information, and Kendrick didn't fact check. Now, we have no way of verifying any of the things that either Kendrick or Drake is saying, but... Whitney, you can hit me if you need a favor. And when I say I hit your back, it's a lot safer. Ooh, ooh. Drake says, I plotted for a week and then we fed you the information. A daughter that's 11 years old, I bet he takes it. We thought about giving a fake name or destination, but you so thirsty, you're not concerned with the investigation. Instead, you in the Venice studio, it's a celebration. You got to learn to fact check things and be less impatient. Your fans are rejoicing, thinking this is my expiration. Even the picture you use, the jokes and the medication. The Maybach glove and the drug he uses for less inflation. Master manipulator, you bit on the speculation. You dumb and reactive, I'm petty with dedication. And then he says, why isn't Whitney denying all of the allegations? You haven't seen the kids in six months. The distance is wild. So this stuff's getting really deep and it's turning pretty aggressive as uh, there were shots fired outside Drake's home. May 7th, 2024 update occurred at a residence on Park Lane Circle. The man shot was a security guard who was standing outside the gates of the home. The man remains in the hospital. Vehicle fled the scene. One article saying Drake's security guard hit outside rapper's Toronto home amid Kendrick Lamar beef. And they're currently reviewing the security footage outside Drake's house. Now it's not lost on me that this happened after Kendrick exposed Drake's house on his album. I've covered enough commentary on YouTube to understand that this is a dox, 100%. This is literally a dox, a dangerous situation that sends people, that tells people where Drake lives. Like on YouTube, there have been whole channels taken down for doxes like this. According to the TOS, we consider content harassment when it targets an individual with prolonged or malicious insults based on intrinsic attributes including their protected group status or physical traits this also includes harmful behaviors such as threats bullying doxing or encouraging abusive fan behavior and since kendrick has posted his docs online there have been three separate incidents and for some reason drake decided to sell his 88 million dollar beverly hills home which is really strange for me i if, if i was him i would be moving out of uh the toronto address Psst. i see dead people and the fact that the song opens up like that, and it's a literal dox, it can only be taken as a threat. But I want to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments section below. Now, as far as who's winning, uh, Not Like Us has 1.7 million likes to 16,000 dislikes. Drake's The Heart Part 6 has 1.1 million dislikes to 666,000 likes. Not to mention that users are trolling Drake in the comment section saying things like, one user saying, if I was a P3DO, I would be arrested. My brother in Christ, Dan Snyder, is a free man. So this situation is incredibly dangerous. They need to stop. It, it's not fun in games anymore. Like, people are getting hurt. Um, but as interesting as this is, it's always something that's more interesting to me. That's right. You guessed it. I want to know what you think. So why don't you go ahead and leave your creative and or interesting responses in the comment box below. Thumbs up, folks. Like, as always, brothers and sisters.
I will see you in the next video. Thank you to my patrons for your continued ongoing support. I am going to end this video with my favorite song of all time. I think that uh, it's, I think that it needs to be heard. And uh, if you want to become a patron and get your name at the end of my videos, like the rest of these guys that you're about to see, I'll put the link in the description. Check it out. See if it's something for you.